Good morning, everyone. It was an early morning for me because normally on Mondays, it's kind of just Rick and I's morning to enjoy together. But yeah, he had to go to work at seven o'clock this morning. So yeah, just, just for a couple hours because remember I told you he's a safety guy. So yeah, there was an accident. So he has to go in, he's got to fill out paperwork and do all that kind of fun stuff. But anyways, yeah, he'll be back after a bit. And I am making myself, yeah, I think this is going to be like my fourth cup of coffee. I just can't seem to wake up today. <sighs> that being said, I hope that you will want to stick around for a little bit of my day. And I'll talk to everyone, yeah, as soon as I finish this, this like fourth cup of coffee. Today I thought that I would share with you a recipe that I originally got from HelloFresh and it's really just called, well, they call it Salsa Verde Enchiladas, but we just call it enchiladas. Okay, so what we have here is I had two green onions that I separated the whites from the greens, but I didn't think two green onions was quite enough onion, so I had a little bit of an onion that I had previously used in my refrigerator, like a quarter of a small onion. So that is just a little bit of regular onion also chopped up. This is a poblano pepper, but also I have some green pepper uh, that I added because I didn't really have enough. Uh, my peppers were very small. This is two diced tomatoes. Um, this is a cup of tomatillo salsa, a can of black beans, a tablespoon of southwest spice that I've taken a half a teaspoon out and put in its own little container, some mozzarella cheese, some sour cream, and of course, some flour tortilla shells. Now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to preheat your oven to 475 degrees and then you're going to put a little bit of drizzle of oil in a large skillet and the first thing we're going to do is add our poblano and green pepper and cook just until they're softened about oh, two to three minutes. Now once our peppers have cooked for about three minutes. We're going to add the tomato and the whites of the scallions. We're also going to add about two tablespoons of our reserved liquid from the beans. And we're going to add our southwest spice, but remember we've taken out a half a teaspoon. And this is when we're going to add half of our beans. And we're just going to allow this to lightly simmer for about two minutes. Now I'm just going to set this aside and get pot and drizzle a little bit of oil in this pot. And we're going to kind of be over a medium to high heat and we're going to add the remaining beans. And we're going to need to kind of watch these so they don't burn. You're going to need to keep them stirring around. Just We just want to soften them. We're just going to cook them for about two minutes, but we do need to kind of keep them moving around so they don't get burnt. Once they're somewhat softened, they're not really going to be all that softened because we've only cooked them for a couple minutes, we are going to add approximately three tablespoons of our reserved liquid. We're going to simmer until they get nice and warm through, maybe one to two minutes. I just turned down my heat a little bit because it seemed a little too hot. And we are going to stir in a tablespoon of butter, which, yeah, I forgot to get. And we're just going to wait for the butter to get melted. And as soon as this butter is melted, we're going to take a potato masher and we're gonna mash up our beans. And these 
aren't going to like mash up totally so they're totally smooth you just want to get kind of that somewhat of the refried bean look here so I'm just I just turned off my heat and I'm just trying to mash them a little bit more add some salt and pepper And that's all there is to it. Now, I've made enough for six. And what we're going to do is take our refried bean mixture and put a little bit on half of each one of our flour tortillas. You're only going to put it on the one half of them. Just spread it out a little bit. And then we're going to add our filling. And we will roll them up. And you're just going to put it into, um, I, had, I sprayed my pan. Since I'm only making six, I didn't need a, a really big pan. But you put the seam side down in the pan. Just like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our tomatillo salsa, and if you don't have tomatillo salsa, use regular salsa. We're going to spoon it over top. And like I said, this is, this is about one cup. Next, we're going to put some cheese on top. Use whatever you have, use whatever you like. And we're going to put this in the oven for about five minutes until it all starts to get bubbly. Bring you back then. Okay, do you remember that half a teaspoon of Southwest Spice that we reserved from the tablespoon we had? Well, while those are cooking, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that to my sour cream that I'm going to use for on top of it. So we're just going to mix that around and it will add just a pop of flavor for your enchiladas. And again, don't forget, if you need to stretch this a little farther, do not be afraid of adding a teaspoon of water at a time in order to make it a little bit thinner so you can stretch it a lot farther. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to check on my enchiladas and yeah, I'll bring you back when I bring them out. And here we are. I drizzled the sour cream on top. I also put the green onion tops on it. And on my husband's, I put a little bit of that hot chili pepper. But if you happened to see that I did not use all of my filling mixture, I knew that it was just gonna fall out. So I just kept it on warm on the stove and I just put it on the side of my husband's plate for him to enjoy that way. But anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you'll give this a try because it really is easy and this is another meal that is done from start to finish in 30 minutes. So anyways, talk to all of you in just a little while. For today's devotion, we will be reading in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. Now, the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart from a good conscience and from a sincere faith. Here, Paul is writing to Timothy and instructing him to stay on top of things in Ephesus so that the teaching stays on track. Apparently, some of the people were introducing made-up stories and fanciful family trees that sort of 
digressed into silliness instead of deepening their faith and obedience. They were bringing in false doctrine. I'm sure you've noticed how air can be detected by what it produces, just like truth can be detected by what it produces. We can tell the gospel is having its effect upon us when we are becoming more compassionate, tenderhearted, and loving. And in turn, we reflect these qualities to the people all around us. This is what Jesus said would happen. And that's why his great commandment to us is that we should love one another. And the source of our love is Jesus Christ. Notice our verse says, love which comes from a pure heart and then a good conscience and then sincere faith. Here, Paul is working backwards because faith comes first. Faith is believing what God has said. In other words, what we believe. By faith, we believe that we are a new person, that we are not the same. Everything in Christianity is to come back to that. Our faith in Christ Jesus and his redemptive work at the cross. Therefore, love begins with sincere faith that the great facts of the gospel are personally true for each one of us, for me and for you. When we believe that, our actions will begin to change. We begin to see that some of the things that we've been doing are not consistent with a changed life. And because we have been made anew in Christ Jesus, these things begin to fade. We didn't have to be forced to stop these things, we began to see that these things were inconsistent with a changed life. And that is what Paul means when he speaks of a good conscience. Conscience is the judge of your behavior. Conscience deals with the way we act, either accusing us or excusing us. When our actions become consistent with who we are in Christ, we have a good conscience and it no longer troubles us because we see ourselves as forgiven, restored, and accepted, and our past has been washed away. Every day, we begin anew on this basis, living according to a good conscience. And that, in turn, results in a pure heart. Our inner attitudes and thought life begin to change because we're no longer the same person. As this occurs, we begin to be a vessel from which flows the love of God. As Paul says in Romans 5, 5, God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Love begins to touch all those around you. That is the gospel. And that is why Paul sent Timothy to Ephesus to ensure that this message be made clear and uncomplicated in Ephesus. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And although we cannot completely identify what all the false teachings were in Ephesus, we can be certain that the need of the hour was urgent because Paul normally opens his letters with thanksgiving for the faith of his readers or for the grace given to them in Christ and with a word of blessing. But in 1 Timothy, he does not begin in this manner. Whatever Timothy's opponents were saying, Paul makes it clear what they were not teaching. Love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. This love is the goal of all godly 
teaching. God bless, and I will talk to you in just a few days, and I hope everyone has a very blessed day. Thank you.